Hello, my name is John Sayer, Technical Marketing Manager, Civil Infrastructure here at Autodesk. Today I'd like to talk with you about AutoCAD Civil 3D and the Autodesk River and Flood Analysis Module. Today we will cover a quick workflow for stream analysis. So let's get started. To give you a bit of background about this project, we've been asked to perform a quick drainage study on a small stream. We'll be solving for the 25, 50, and 100 year flows for this analysis. So as you can see here, We've got a stream that's shown here on our screen. I've got some points set up for where I'd like my cross-section locations to be. Uh, this is a Civil 3D surface, so if I select it, you can see that it is a Civil 3D surface. So I'll just show you that real quick. You can kind of see the, the channel there. So what I want to do is I want to go ahead and start with by selecting the River tab here in Civil 3D. There's a couple things we need to set up first. We need to go ahead and select section elevation data source so that it knows where to pull the elevations from for our cross sections so we can actually pick those from a layer so meaning there could be polylines in this drawing that had elevation on them wouldn't have to necessarily be a surface we could just select that layer and it would pull the elevations from that layer but we don't we're going to use an actual civil 3d surface and you can see it here eg so i'm going to tell it first that i want to select all the layers and i want to ignore the layers and i'm going to select my surface and I'm going to tell it to use the surface for my elevations. All right, so once I've set my elevation data source, I'm going to go ahead and use the uh, vport command. I'm going to split my screen. I'll go ahead and select two vertical, right? Because it's going to ask us here in a minute when we build these sections, it's going to ask us for a viewport to set them in. So then I'll go back and I will select uh, 3D section cut. And we'll go ahead and just give it a description here. This the first one we're going to do is going to be called CR A A. And hit OK. Our leftmost station will start at 100, so we'll start at this point, and that will start at station 100 and move in this direction. We'll hit OK. It asks me from points. So I'm going to zoom in here and I'm going to select around this area. Now I'm going to follow the contours. Okay, so I need to follow the way the water would be traveling down these contours. So I'm going to follow it to here, cut across, and then go back down to here. And I'll select enter. We need to go ahead and do this for the rest of the locations, B, C, and D. So I'm going to go ahead and select 3D section cut, and I'll give it a description of CR space B dash B. And I'll go ahead and hit OK, and I'll create my section following the contours, so the flow of the water. All right, picking my viewport, and it shows the section I just cut. Do the same thing again. So this will be CR space uh, C dash C. Hit OK, and I'll draw that section. And you can see it updated my section view here in this viewport. Last one, CR space D dash D, hit OK, and I'll draw that section. So whether you draw four sections or you draw 40 sections, uh, it's this easy to put them in. And again, that's just one method of getting the sections um, inside of your model. All right, so our sections are done. Now what we need to do is describe those sections. So, so we'll select Selection Description, and we will go ahead and move to Cross Section 1, which Cross Section 1 is going to be AA. All right. Um, there's a few things we need to fill out in here. We need to fill out our overbank station on either side, and we can do this visually and graphically on our screen. And we need to give it a Manning in, and we need to give it a flow length. Now, we're, we'll just walk through each one of these. So I'm going to go ahead and select my left overbank station. I can do this graphically here on the screen. All right. Do the same thing on the right. And again, you can type these numbers in too. I'll go ahead and give it a Manning's in for my left side or my left, uh, my left bank, and that'll be 0 0.05. My channel is going to be 0 0.035, and my right bank will be 0 0.05. Now I could hit the three dot button here or the ellipsis and it'll give us the different Manning's ends for the different types of descriptions for our channel. 
So if it's a clean, straight, full, no rifts or deep pools channel for the main channel, here's your minimum, normal, and maximum Manning's end numbers that you can use. So go ahead and hit close. Now, since I'm at my, my lowest cross-section view here, um, and we're standing upstream looking down station-wise, um, there will be no uh, calculated length here. But when we go to cross-section 2, and I fill this out, we'll go ahead and do it real quick. Pick my left over bank. Then I'll pick my right over bank. And I don't have to fill in Manning's in again if I don't want to because it'll use those throughout that I poked in on the first cross-section view. We can change them, though, so I could fill this out. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and pick a, a flow length. All right, and my flow length, actually, you need to hit apply there first, and then I'll hit my flow length. My flow length is going to be from this cross-section to this cross-section. Do the same thing on the right. So we'll go from here to here. And then I want to go ahead and define my channel. So I'm going to pick here in the center of the channel. And you can pick multiple points. You don't have to just pick two points. Define my channel. All right. I'll hit apply. And I'll go ahead and go to cross section three. And we'll do the same thing we've been doing. So I'm going to, I'm going to select my left overbank location. Again, remember you can just type in a number here if you'd like. I'll leave my Mannings in alone because we'll use the same thing we've been using for the other two. I'll go ahead and hit apply this time and notice what that does over here on the right in this viewport. It shows the circles there and the, and the, the definition of the overbank. So I'm going to go ahead and, and select a flow. So I'm going to go from this location to that location. That is for the left. I'll go ahead and select my right flow distance here. And then I'll select my channel. Now I'm doing the left and the right and then the channel. It doesn't matter. You can do the left, the channel, then the right. It's just how I'm picking it today. So I'm going to pick here, then go back to my channel location there. I'll hit apply. And then i got one more section view that I need to apply this to or apply the, this set of settings to. So I'll select my overbank location. I'll go ahead and select the right side. And then we will do our flow links again like we've been doing. Now, again, you need to hit apply so that it shows us where we're at here. Don't have to. It's just a, it's a good thing to be visual, um, for, for me at least, uh, so I can see where I'm calculating distances. So I'm going to pick from here to here. That will add my, my distance on the left. And I will add my distance on the right. And we will actually add the channel also. Once that's done, I'll hit Apply, and I'll hit OK. We're ready to go ahead and analyze this, except we got one last thing we need to do. We need to add our flows. So here in the River, the river tab of the ribbon, I'm going to select Flows under Create Reach Data. And I'm actually going to put in three different storms. So I'll have the 10, or actually, I'm sorry, the 25-year. I'll do the 50-year, and this can be any, any year storm that you need. And I'll do the 100 year. Column 1 matches column 1 here under our boundary conditions. So I'm going to put in our initial flow um, for or our flow for the 25 year storm will be 300 CFS. All right. And I'm going to select that it will be we'll be using a normal depth and select this calculate button and it'll calculate the slope for us. In row 2, the the 50-year storm is 500 CFS. Again, the stormwater engineer will have calculated these flows to be input. And it will select the normal normal depth and select calculate. Same thing for the 100. So we got 700 CFS for the 100. And we're solving for normal depth on the downstream condition. And it calculates our slope. We hit apply and OK. Now we're ready to go ahead and compute or run our analysis or compute our analysis. So I select compute analysis and it runs the analysis on the stream. All right, our analysis is done. So nothing visually really changed, but if we go up to section results, we can drop down and select add section results. And I'm going to add all three. So I'm going to go ahead and select all three of them. I could have hit the all button. 
Um, I've got several options here on what I can display. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to display the flow discharge, the computer water surface elevation, and it will erase anything that I've previously done. So a few things we need to add here. I need to change the color of the way these lines are going to show up here in my, in my cross-section view. So I select the first profile and I hit options, and I'm going to change the color to green. All right, and I'll hit OK. I'm going to go ahead and select the second profile. I'm going to make that color. I'll just go ahead and leave it cyan. And I'll pick the third profile, and I'm going to change that color to red. And I'll go ahead and select OK. And it populates my sections. So these sections were actually put out here in your model, but it just zooms to them in this specific viewport whenever I change which section I want to look at. So if I go to section 1 here, it'll bring up that section. And you can see that it actually shows the different Mannings in for the different pieces of the stream. So the channel was at uh, 0 0.035, if you remember. We set the, uh, the left and right banks at 0 0.05 for Mannings in. And it gives us a nice chart here that tells us what our computed, computed water surface elevation is for each one of the storms. And we can visually see where we're at. Now, we can also map the floodplain. So I'm going to just select uh, Flood Map and Add Flood Map. And we're going to add all three, display the intersected edge of water, and it's going to give us the BFE elevation contours. We can add uh, you know, shallow flooded areas, straight line edge of water, all of these different things we could display. These are the only two we'll go, uh, go with today. I'll select my profile one, and I'll change the options. I'm going to go ahead and have it just draw some lines. So the only thing that we'll do is, is we will we could have it hatch these particular areas. But I'm going to go ahead and just tell it right now that I want to change my intersection step to 5. If you lower this down, it's how it intersects the water surface. It samples it a little bit tighter, so that's why we're going to do that. I'm going to change that color to this is the 25-year storm. So uh, we can make it whatever color we want. You know, we can make it, uh, let's start off with green like we did in the chart. And I'm going to give it a global width of, of two feet, so it'll, it'll make it a, a nice thick line on the outside. The second profile, and I'll do the same thing. It does hold my, my uh, intersection step size, so I'll go ahead and select the color. I believe we used uh, cyan for the second one, and I'll give it a width of two. Last thing we need to go ahead and, and the third profile would be the 100 year. So we'll go ahead and set that to... I believe it was red, and we'll give it a global width of two also. All right, so we'll leave everything else default, and we'll hit OK. And you can see here, there's all three of my floodplain elevations of my flood map shown um, in my plan view. Very quick and easy, we we're able to see the limits of our floodplain. We we're able to see our elevations inside of our cross-section views. Um, let's take this one step further, and let's push this back out to the Corps of Engineers uh, version of HECRAS, the actual HECRAS software that you can download from the Corps of Engineers. So first things first, we need to just select Export HECRAS Project. And we'll push it out, and I'll just uh, I'll build another folder here, and we'll call this uh, for export uh, to HECRAS. All right, we'll go ahead and just leave the name here. Hit save, and it pushed the project out uh, as HECRAS would read it. So I've got HECRAS here opened up. I'm just going to open up the model that I just pushed out. So I'll go to my D drive here. We'll navigate to that folder, and we'll select our project and hit OK. If I select Edit and Enter Geom Geometric Data, it shows my run, and notice the arrows pointed in the correct direction. It gives me the same reach name. If I look at my cross sections, you can see they're all filled out, and everything is the same as it would be here back in Civil 3D. Notice the station we start at, all right? But there's no water elevation. So if I close this dialog box, and then I run up to Run and select Steady Flow Analysis, it, it remembers the flows or brought across the flows that we added before. So I'm just going to hit Compute. And then I'll open those cross-section views back up. So if I hit the cross-section view now, I can see my water surface elevation. So this just shows that uh, basically we are using HECRAS inside of Civil 3D. That is what the river and flood analysis module is based on. Okay, and I can, I, can, uh, I can show you one more thing here. If we go to print a report, I'll go back to Civil 3D here. If I go up to my output report, 
and I select all of my different profiles and I hit OK, you can see that it actually prints you out a HECRAS report. If I go back to the HECRAS that I downloaded from the Army Corps of Engineers, then it would it would print out the same exact report here. So it is it is the exact report from HECRAS. So you're actually just using HECRAS inside of Civil 3D and it's visual. So if you have to perform a simple stream analysis to see what is flowing down a stream or a channel, like a preliminary condition, just what is there existing, uh, very easy to do. Uh, you can add as many cross sections as you'd like. I hope you enjoyed the presentation and I want you to have a great day.